business you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for the Tech Guy is provided by Cashfly. C-A-C-H-E-F-L-Y dot com. Hi, this is Leo Laporte, and this is my Tech Guy podcast. This show originally aired on the Premier Networks on Sunday, July 1st, 2018. This is episode 1502. Enjoy. Well, hey, 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 how are you today? Leo Laporte here, the Tech Guy. Oh, yeah. Time to talk computers, the Internet, home theater, digital photography, smartphones. We talk about smart watches. We talk about, you know, smart watches. <laughs> There's a big category. Uh, we talk about uh, augmented reality, yeah. Uh, we talk about anything with a chip in it. 8888-ASK-LEO, that's the phone number. 888-827-5536. That's toll-free from anywhere in the U.S. or Canada. If you want to join the conversation on this show, just call that number. Outside the U.S. Uh, and Canada, you can still call. We, I love getting calls from all over the world. Thanks to the Internet, we get them. Uh, all you have to do is use Skype out or some sort of solution like that. And, since it's a toll-free number in the U.S., shouldn't cost you anything. Our website is techguylabs.com, techguylabs.com. That's free, no sign-up. You can just go there, and if you hear me talk about something on the show, you can just, you know, get the link or whatever there, techguylabs.com. Some good news, I think, from the same agency that brought us the Internet, DARPA, the Defense Advanced Research Projects Agency, D-A-R-P-A. It's a uh, arm of the Department of Defense, but it's it's always been kind of a blue sky research and development arm. And uh, recently, Congress uh, added $150 million a year to something called the Electronics Resurgence Initiative. Over the next five years, $1.5 billion. And DARPA is going to use some of that money they announced uh, they announced this week uh, to do something I think quite interesting to fund a research project to open source tools to make chips. So right now we're in a situation where it's very expensive to design a computer chip. Intel and AMD and Apple does some. There's uh, chips based on the ARM processor made by companies like Samsung and Qualcomm. Uh, these companies may spend as much as half a billion dollars to create a system on a chip, a, a new processor for your computer or your phone. A half a billion dollars, very expensive. But I love the idea. The, the, the DARPA, the federal government, will, def will fund this research to create tools that will let anybody, anybody, create their own chips, pro processors. If it succeeds, it, it could completely open the door for people uh, anywhere to make their own systems on a chip. I think this is a very smart idea. And, you know, it'll take, it'll probably take a decade before we see the results. But, you know, we've learned that relying on Intel, <laughs> Apple's learned this, is not necessarily the best thing to do for innovation in this country. Intel has been slow to bring innovations to market, and they've unfortunately depended on an innovation they created in 1995 called speculative execution to speed up their chips, and it turns out it has vast security flaws that are now being discovered. An open source uh, chip project, I think, would be very interesting. So I'm, gl I'm glad about that. That's the good news. The bad news, and I, it's not a law yet. It's In fact, it's probably not going to be. I hope it's not going to become a law. But yesterday, uh, Thomas Massey of the House of Representatives introduced H.R. 6264, the Restore, it's got a great name, the Restoring America's Leadership and Innovation Act. But it has a completely flawed premise. They want to abolish the ability to go to the patent office and say, hey, I don't think that patent was a good patent. I want you to review it. And as of right now, there is something called the inter partes review, which allows you to do exactly that. And I'll tell you why I'm kind of aware of this and, I, and interested in this. I'm a podcaster. You've heard podcasts. Aren't they great? Well, there was a company out of Texas. It was We call them, uh, there's, there's, there's different names for them. 
NPE is the kind of bland name, non-practicing entity, a company that buys patents but doesn't actually make anything with them and uses them to make money by charging companies the, for the right to use the patent. There's another name for that that's maybe a little less polite, patent trolls, companies that make money by going around demanding payments for the right to do things that they probably shouldn't get the right to do. In this case, it was a company that said, well, we invented podcasting back in the 80s. They didn't. <laughs> they invented a way to create automatically create a playlist for cassettes but that <laughs> uh, but they patented it and they claimed that that patent gave them the rights to go to every podcaster and demand royalties they asked my company for more than a million i think two million dollars million and a half two million dollars, i can't remember it was very scary and this is how patent trolls work because generally what they do is they come to you and say give us some money you could fight them but that means you'll see them in court and most podcasters especially don't have the resources to do that so they hand over the dough unfortunately this company went after a couple of podcasters who had a little bit deeper pockets and got the attention of something called the electronic frontier foundation eff and eff went to the patent office using this inter partes review and said hey patent office i know you granted this patent back in the 80s is it is it does it apply to podcasting? And the patent office said no. And the whole thing went away, saving people a lot of money. There are many similar ones. You might get a demand letter if you have a, a photocopier machine in your office. There's very famous patent trolls been going around <laughs> demanding payments because you're using a photocopier and they claim the rights to it. Uh, and it works because most companies, see, the mistake that, that this company made when they came to us is asking for so much money. You have to ask for just a little money so that fighting it in court would cost so much more that you go, well, I'll give you the $50,000. All right, I'm not going to pay a million dollars to defend this. And then they build up a bigger and a bigger, uh, you know, little kitty, and then they can go after bigger and bigger companies. They, uh, they made a mistake, I guess, in this case. And it was because this inter partes review exists. This, this patent law allows companies to go to the patent office and say, you know, and the patent office sometimes is a little sloppy with patents, especially software patents. There's even a debate about whether you should be able to patent software. That's a relatively new thing. Uh, and so the ability to go back to the patent office and say, can you look at that again, saves us. This uh, proposed law, and I hope you will write your member of Congress and say, because I don't know if they pay that much attention. But we do. And my, right, your member of Congress say, this H.R. 6264 is a bad idea. This will just facilitate patent trolls. And, uh, and that's not, that's not going to foster American innovation. That is not going to do what you say your law will do. The Restoring America's Leadership and Innovation Act. Not, not in the least. It's quite the opposite. So uh, just, you know... Keep, keep that in mind. If you like podcasts or if you like using a copy photocopier, things like that, you, you, you might want to keep in mind that's not such a good idea. What else is going on? Uh, Comcast had an outage. Two fiber lines cut at the same time. That was weird. See, they say, oh, it's just a coincidence. And it makes me wonder when you get same day, same time, Two fiber optic lines in different parts of the country get cut. Hmm. And Microsoft's working on something called Project Andromeda that looks very interesting. A pocketable surface running Windows. You, it's the size of a smartphone, but you open it up, and the screen goes across the hinge, so it's a screen that's uh, 10 inches, like an iPad. Hmm. The Andromeda Project. Not out yet. Just, uh, just it's not. It's more than a rumor, but uh, and there have been pictures and so forth. I think it'd be very interesting. I want to encourage them to do this. Uh, eighty-eight, eighty-eight. Ask Leo. That's the phone number. I'd love to hear from you if you have a question, a comment, a suggestion. You want to talk high tech? You want some help? A little hand holding on the information superhighway, as we used to call it. Eighty-eight, eighty-eight. Ask Leo. 8888-ASK-LEO, 888-827-5536. Kim Schaffer's there answering the phones, and we'll get to your calls right after this. Proposition 7. It has not yet 
qualified. I don't know. Pass the assembly. Oh, I guess it doesn't have to qualify because it came from the assembly. Add to section 86808 to the government code and repeal sections 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5 of the Daylight Saving Time Act, an initiative approved at November 8, 1949, special election relating daylight saving time. Yeah, it would repeal daylight saving time. But the voters have to approve it. Wow. Approved June 28th. So, yeah, it'll be on the ballot. Hmm. Prop 7. Repeal daylight saving time. I'm all for it. Boy, that'd be amazing. Would be you can't you can't uh stay on uh you can't you have to stay on daylight time. You can't stay on saving time. That's what happened in Florida. They they voted to stay on daylight saving time, but that's not legal. <laughs> that would change their time zone. Leo Laporte. The tech guy, 8888, ask Leo. Girl, when you when you call, you'll get her. Kim Schaffer. Hi, Kim Schaffer, sitting in Radio Corner. That's what we call it. Because you have a big old transmitter behind you. Good news, though, it's not on. So, Oh, your would, health that, is... would that be bad? Would well, that be a, a cancer risk? <laughs> maybe. I don't know. Those things, there's a lot of power in there. Shouldn't, shouldn't sit that close to a transmitter. Uh, you know, I began my career at a radio station where the transmitter was right in front of me. Uh-huh. Sat there hours a day. I'm, you know, I still had children. They're a little <laughs> weird, but I had them. So, uh, I've been sitting in places like, like what I know. I'm looking at right now with screens yeah, all I know. around me for eh. years. So, eh. I don't know. I, I, I think there's no hope, really. <laughs> so, did you see? I've been looking at the ballot proposition. We're in the state of California. We are. And, uh, they, uh, as of the end of the month, you know, uh, June 28th, I think, Friday. Uh, all of the ballot propositions had to either be approved or disapproved. This is the last day. And I just noticed that there is a proposition on the state of California ballot for November, Proposition 7, that would repeal daylight saving time. Yeah, I think I had heard a little bit about that. I like that. I, what do you think? I, I, I'm fine. I just... I don't care which time zone. Just it not is. change. Just no, don't, don't change. No changes. Just leave it alone. You have to because it's a federal d uh, law. The time zones are federal, uh -huh. so you can't say we want to be in a different time zone. You, you, that would have to get congressional approval. Federal Congress would have to approve that. But you can say we don't want to change the time. Yeah, that would be totally in the summer. Fine we don't want me. summertime. So it would be ten twenty-two right now our time instead of eleven twenty-two. That's fine. So what is that? Is it going to get darker earlier or stay it'll get, lighter it'll later? Get, uh, it'll, get dark, <laughs> <laughs> it'll get darker, darker earlier. earlier. But not that. I mean, hey, now we're in the middle of the summer. Yeah, because right now it's, it's like 8 or 9 p.m. Yeah. when it gets dark. Yeah, I was uh, out waiting for fireworks last night at 9. And they yeah. can't do it till 9.30 because it doesn't get dark. So enough, that would so. make it 8.30. 8.30 is okay. Uh, do, do the fireworks at 8.30. Sun would come up bed. earlier, but you don't care about that. No, not usually. I like this. I would love to see this. We, daylight saving time is actually relatively recent. It was only in the 60s it became nationwide. It was uh, a farm thing, right? Yeah, and farmers, and now this will be a good test because California, as you know, is agricultural. Right. Farmers don't like it either. They mm -hmm. they still have to get up at the same time. To milk. Cows don't know about daylight saving time, apparently. <laughs> the cow. Don't know how that, they, no, they didn't get the memo. <laughs> so they still have to get up at the same time, milk the cows and all of that stuff. I, I think it's a good idea to keep it the same. We know that there are more accidents on the Monday after daylight saving time. We know that there's more heart attacks. It's stressful. You don't get as much sleep. Because this is the one that we lose the hour. Well, you we just any time changes are good. Yeah. Yeah. I, I always have losing an hour is bit really losing. bad. Yeah. yeah. That's spring forward. Yeah. Yeah. You don't like to lose it. I don't hour. want that. No. I don't mind falling back. I don't mind falling back at all. I love when I was getting up to go to a radio station in the city at to be there at five a.m. I was so happy when we fell back. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. So I'm I'm for I've been you know I think a lone crusade, but every time the time changes, I rail on and on about what a bad idea it is. So I'm glad to see maybe the state of California will follow the suit of, I think, Arizona and Hawaii don't do yeah. it. I think we should not do it. Yep, I, I'm, I would vote for it. Yay. Yay. There's I'm already, two of us. <laughs> I'm already campaigning. Does this mean we have to give equal time to the daylight no. saving time contingent? No, you don't. Well, Leo, you're wrong.
<laughs> you need to set the clocks forward. The radio you know. station has to. I don't think. I don't think there's any anybody <laughs> has to. <laughs> I think that's all gone too. So you've been answering the phones, slaving. Yes. See, you had to come in extra early. Extra early. A slaving over a hot phone, and you've come up with some calls for us. Yeah, I hope. Jim. Jim in Lakewood, Colorado, just got a new car, and. Uh, He's having a hard time pairing with the Bluetooth, and he's dealt with the dealers, and they haven't been able to give him any help, and so he was going to see if you had any ideas. Yeah, this is kind of a, f a famous... And he's like, it doesn't have the three-millimeter jack, so that's yeah. not even an option. He has to be yeah. Bluetooth. Thank you, Kim. Hello, Jim. Leo Laporte, the tech guy. Hi, Leo. Brand new car, huh? What'd you get? Uh, Honda CRV. Nice. Going back and forth to work. Um, yeah, but a nice car. Does Honda, I think Hondas have the CarPlay and the Android Auto, right? Yes, yes. Uh, the pairing works great with my iPhones, my, my wife's and my iPhone. But when I I want to uh, uh, pair it with a MP3 player, and um, I've purchased four of them, different ones. Huh. They turned them all because uh, they don't pair with the, the Honda, but they'll pair with my other car or my friend's car. So, it, And I've taken the car into the dealership and uh, had them try to do it. And uh, they said it's a problem and to call the customer support. And I called the customer support uh, with the problem. We tried to do it there. And... Uh, they That's interesting. That Honda, they said that a Honda isn't too good in their entertainment. Uh, <laughs> that's that's the excuse. We don't know how to do it. It's their fault. So the, there are when you pair via Bluetooth, there are different. We call them profiles that you use when you have a Bluetooth headset. You know, for phone calls, it uses a, a headset profile. When you want to play music. It uses a stereo profile. There's a couple of them, but the most common, the, probably the one supported by your Honda, is A2DP. Yes. Uh, I, I'm suspicious that it, that's the problem. That it. Can you play music from your phone through the Honda? Yes. Do you have to connect it to the CarPlay, or do you can you play it through Bluetooth? Um, I believe you can play it through the, through the phone, which uh, would mean that it's using Bluetooth. Yeah, if you can play it without any wire connection and it's stereo full quality, then it supports A2DP. Or, you know, there are later uh, Bluetooth profiles that it might, but the advanced A2 is advanced audio distribution profile. And that is, that's designed for audio, for music streaming. It's stereo, it has higher quality than the headset profile. It sounds like there's an incompatibility in Honda's A2DP implementation. It's not standard, because you're able to pair that MP3 player to other devices, including, exactly. including your other car. Exactly. Yes. So, um, you know, it, it, it may be that the, comp that the company you went to, the third party that you went to, was right when they said Honda doesn't do this too well. What it would mean is they don't, they don't properly implement the A2DP profile. Does anybody uh, in the chat room have experience this is partly this is just that Bluetooth stinks, but but this one is pretty well known, and, and, and most cars will pair with any A2DP compatible Bluetooth device. As long as your, um, your MP3 player supports A2DP, uh, your car ought to. And uh, so I'm, uh, it sounds like Honda's doing something odd. Let me look into it and see if I can figure it out for you. Meanwhile... CarPlay doesn't let you uh, use an MP3 player, but at least you can use CarPlay to play music from your iPhone. Leo Laporte, the tech guy. Yeah, they're not going to be able to set the clock ahead permanently. This would eliminate. Um, this would eliminate the change in the summer. We'd stay on standard time. So, anybody have a CRV and uh, you know a 2018 Honda CRV and able to pair it to their support? Yeah. Uh, he has to update his software. Where Mike be on the car or on the f on the uh, MP3 player? Mike B says, Jim, that it's a software update. The device setting single has limited. Okay, on the car. So Mike B says, and your Honda dealer may be required to do this. That you need to update the car's 
the uh, car multimedia player software. Mike, where are you getting that from? Oh, you have a 2018 Accord. Okay. Did you, Mike, did you update your Accord's software? To, and did that, was that required to work with A2DP properly? Uh, so Mike says that, yeah, he had to update it. So, and we'll put this link in the show notes, Jim. Owners.honda.car.com. And now this is the um, this is for your cord, but I imagine the CRV would have a similar thing. How to update the display audio software wirelessly? You don't have to. Oh, good news! You don't have to go to the dealer. You need to be on Wi-Fi. So you'll go into your settings uh, on your uh, on your head end unit. You know your your stereo. And you want to update via Wi-Fi. So first you'll need to get on the Wi-Fi at your house. And then they will push a Wi-Fi update. You can also use USB. Okay. So we'll put, uh, I'll tell you what, Jim, we'll put link, the links that uh, Mike B's passing along in our um, show notes. That sounds like that is a, that is a Honda-specific issue. Now, he has an Accord, but I bet you it's the same as uh, with the CRV. I'm surprised that... The dealer didn't know this. Yeah, so you want to maybe park in the garage or real close to the house so you can get the Wi-Fi connection to your house. That's interesting. Thank you, guys. I, You guys are good. There is no problem you cannot solve. Jim called. Uh, last call before the break. Uh, has a new, brand new 2018 Honda CRV. Can't pair his Bluetooth player to it. And uh, my suspicion was that it wasn't up to date uh, in its Bluetooth profiles. You know, there are a ton of Bluetooth profiles. All different things that Bluetooth can do. Mike B. in our chat room has a 2018 Honda Accord. He had a similar problem. And he said, you can update it. He updated his. So you don't have to bring it to the dealer anymore to update the firmware in your Honda entertainment system. You can do it on, on a couple of ways. On Wi-Fi, if you can you know, get it close enough to your house or parked in the garage where you can get Wi-Fi. Uh, you can join the Wi-Fi signal, and then you'll get an update. Uh, or you can do it via USB. We'll put a link in the show notes at techilabs.com to uh, Honda's description of how to do this. And he says it fixed it for him. So there you go. See, the chat room is so great. There's not a, not a question they can't answer. When you call this show, you're not just calling me. You're calling a, a vast team. I call it Team Tech Guy. To, to help you with your questions. I was looking through Wikipedia has a list of Bluetooth profiles. And, of course, the most common one is the headset profile that allows you to, uh, you know, HSP, that allows you to connect to a Bluetooth, you know, phone device. And then the, the second most common, maybe more common now than ever, the Advanced Audio Distribution Profile, or A2DP, lets you connect to stereo speakers, high-quality speakers for music player. But there's a bunch more. ATT, the attribute profile. AVRCP, the audio video remote control profile. So it's like a Bluetooth remote. The basic imaging profile. So you could send images via Bluetooth. BIP. There's BPP, does printing. CI, a CIP, which lets you access ISDN, which is kind of an old school uh, phone line technology. There's the cordless telephony profile, the device ID profile, the dial-up networking profile, fax profile. Yes, you can fax by Bluetooth. File transfer, generic video audio distribution, GAVDP. That's actually used with A2DP. In fact, it may be the place that you're having problems, Jim, because uh, clearly you support A2DP, but it may be that the underlying, <laughs> I love saying this, GAVDP is, is not properly configured there's the g generic access profile the generic attribute profile the generic object exchange profile i'm just at the g's it goes on and on and on <laughs> so bluetooth can do a lot of things none of them well uh, you know we're they keep updating bluetooth and it doesn't seem to get any better so much so that apple actually modified bluetooth for its iphone and for its uh AirPods, the headset, the blue wireless headsets that they make, and they put a dedicated chip in there and all sorts of stuff. And it does make it better, actually. So maybe there's some room for improvement. I hope that helps, Jim. See if you can get an update. 
Meanwhile, we got Marshall in Des Moines, Iowa, on the line. Hi, Marshall. Hello. Hello. I'm I'm upgraded to a uh, iOS 12 public beta. Oh, uh, you did that, did you? You did that, did you? <laughs> okay. Um, so what I ran into is I turned off my CarPlay um, back before I updated. And now I can't find the restriction area to turn that all back on. It's no longer under the general like it used to be. And I'm just wondering if anybody... So you want to re-enable CarPlay, is that it? Yeah, and that's under restrictions where you can turn off, like, app purchases and all that kind yeah. of stuff. Yeah. So, so uh, I'll tell you a little, a handy little tip that, frankly, is not immediately obvious. But if you go to settings, up at the top, there's a little search. And you can type in CarPlay, for instance, and go to the parts of the settings where CarPlay can be controlled. Uh, it's it's in general now, it looks like, general CarPlay. I'm on iOS 12 as well. Now, I have to warn you that uh, anybody listening, going to iOS really isn't recommended for your main device because it's buggy. Do you notice, for instance, when you first start up, Marshall, that it seems to, like, hang for a while, just sit there and not be able to do anything? Yeah, I'm, I'm not so, I mean, I, I, I as long as it works, you know, I, I can always back, you know, start from a backup that I've done. Yeah, or, yeah. I mean, I understand the curiosity. It won't be out till September. Just, you know, remember when you're using, and it is a public beta now for iOS, yeah. iOS 12, and Mojave for Mac OS is also available in public beta. They don't do public betas for Watch OS, mostly because... It's as easy it is to go back to the iOS 11 on your iPhone. It's almost impossible on an Apple Watch. So they don't let people try Apple Watch software ahead of time. So, I yeah. Have a, another question about Siri and voice commands. Sure. I don't know if you remember back in the day when computer Apple, you could just change the name that you called the computer and then have it launch anything on the make things speakable. Um, are you, you said that like theory is too complicated for like the chips that they're giving these things, but I wrote Apple before and says, why don't you take it back to your old voice command, that yeah. plain talk standard? Yeah. Um, yeah. So, so Siri actually on the iPhone, for instance, has really a lot of processor power, right? The iPhone is a desktop class processor. So, yeah. so you can't. Really say you could say that in a, a a standalone device, but Apple doesn't make a lot of those. They make the HomePod, uh, and actually the HomePod has an iPhone processor in it too. I think it's got the I can't remember if it's the iPhone six or the iPhone seven. I think it's the iPhone 7's processor in it, the A11. So the, even the HomePod has a lot of capability. It is the case with the Amazon Echo. You know, the, you get four choices of trigger words on the Echo, but Siri doesn't let you change the trigger word at all, and I, it's too bad because frankly. It, it triggers all the time. So uh, I was listening to a book the other day, and the guy said something like, hey, seriously, what time is it? And the book, <laughs> and Siri triggered and started to say what time it is. This morning, I'm watching the World Cup, and for some reason, because I have a HomePod in the kitchen, it's off in the corner, it just starts mumbling. Because it's not very loud. I can, just hear, I can hear Siri talking in the background. And you just all you do is you go, shut up. <laughs> yeah, because I, I had the old 100 and that first dual processor Apple had. And that was capable of voice yeah. commands where you could launch apps with your voice. Yeah. Apps with time, jokes. And I was like, it would be nice if Apple just went back to that offline standard versus Siri. Yeah, no, they could they could do it. You've got enough memory and processor power on on almost all the existing Siri devices, except for maybe a really old phone, that there's no reason that they couldn't make Siri better. Um, but, you know, that's one issue with using Apple stuff. You don't really, there's not really many options. <laughs> it's Apple's way or the highway. So I'll register your note. I'll make sure when next time I'm having coffee with Tim Cook, I'll tell him. I emailed them. Yeah, that's probably the best thing to do. Yeah, email them. And uh, actually, if you email the CEO of almost any company, but certainly Apple, they have a large group, the office of the executive, that 
uh, reads all the email and often responds. So it's actually possible on some of these big companies that really care about customers to directly uh, talk to them. Are you blind? Is that why you uh, use this? No, I just always found it handy back yeah. in the day when you could just walk up, have the computer list I know. and say, hey, computer, what time is it? Computer, launch this app. So you didn't have to yeah. be in contact I'm with, you. with the computer. Yeah. And I think now, we're getting there. You need the internet. Yeah, you're you're getting there. Uh, but yeah, the off the ability to do offline processing, I think they just don't want to build that in. There are other reasons too. They want to collect information about how you use Siri, and they do. Leo Laporte, the tech guy. Oh, Michael Cozio, our musical director, spinning some great discs today. Leo Laporte, the tech guy. Eighty-eight, eighty-eight. Ask Leo. Joel in Lompoc, California is next. Hello, Joel. Hey, Leo. Hey, welcome. Can you hear me? Thank you. Um, I have a question regarding my phone. Um, what I do with my computer is every other month or so, I take my laptop, I completely reformat it. I have all my programs saved in an install directory. <laughs> I install the operating system and I reinstall the programs. And, and of course, I backed up my data and I copy my data back. Yeah. <laughs> And you do that? Why do you Why do you do that? I, I mean, I don't. I think it's a good idea, but because uh, you know, I've listened to you for a long time, you know, and you tell people, you know, how to repair their computers and stuff, and you say, well, in the end, the the easiest way to do it is just reformat and start over. Yeah, that wipes all the uh, from time to time. Goes yeah, away. plus there's the advantage, and I hope you do this of not installing everything that you had on it before, like just you know, using exactly. this opportunity. Yeah, pare it down a little. Yeah. Yeah. That's exactly what I do because then I built up all these other things I've installed until I don't really need yeah. that. So I only install what I need as I go. That's nice. Yeah. So, so my question is, does the phone, I have uh, I have a Samsung uh, Galaxy S5. Yes, it's an old phone, I know, but I'm not paying $1,000 for a new phone right now. <laughs> I don't blame you. <laughs> and uh, I don't know if the phone can do that kind of thing without, like, going to the cloud oh. or whatever stuff they have. I don't know. Yeah, you. Yeah, that's an interesting question. So it's a. I think it's a. I mean, you know, it also depends on how much free time you have. But I think it's a, a salutary thing to do every once in a while to refresh your PC by erasing and starting over. Uh, and you've got it kind of down to a science, so it's not such a. It's not as big a deal for you. Uh, I'm not sure I do it every six months, but you know, I. I you know, I probably do the same thing, maybe even more often. And it, what it does give you is the freedom to install stuff a little bit more freely, right? Because you know, you could try stuff. And you know you're going to have a clean install in a few months anyway. And then just not reinstall the stuff you don't like. The phone is a little bit more challenging uh, in, in some ways and in some ways not. So uh, it depends on what you want to keep. The hard thing on a phone is to back up personal data. But most of the time what's on your phone, text messages uh, and uh, pictures, maybe some music, most of that time you're getting... Uh, I think you might lose text messages, but you you probably already backing up your pictures on a Samsung or any Android device. You can use either the Samsung Gallery or I recommend Google's Photos, and that'll automatically back up all your photos. So you won't lose anything there. And music, you probably synced that over from a PC. You, you can just recopy it. So it's very easy to wipe it because uh, all phones have a have a kind of factory reset capability it's it's actually explicitly labeled that on android phones on apple you have to kind of go in and but but the idea of starting your phone from scratch totally doable on your s5 what you probably want to do before you do it is turn on first of all create if you haven't already a samsung account and then of course you have a google account and then go into the settings. Uh, it's under backup. Uh, I think it's backup and reset. Same place you're going to erase the phone. And turn on. Make sure you've got turned on the Google backup. And you might even want to explicitly say back it up now. What that's going to back up is the ne the names of the apps you have. Uh, and what it does not do is back up the actual app. And truthfully, you don't want to do that. When the when the once you erase the phone, you're going to restore the apps. And it's going to download fresh copies. And you probably want to do that, too, because they'll be updated most likely. So in a way, yeah, you totally can do that with an S5. The question is, do you need to do that? I'm, I'm going to say, unless you have noticed a problem, probably not.
I mean, there's no reason not to do it. You're not going to wear out the phone by doing that. It's just a lot of work. Uh, I do this all the time. I'm setting up new Android phones all the time. Another thing you, uh, that you might want to do, uh, depending on the launch you're using on an Android phone, is save your setup. This is something uh, that Apple does, but kind of inter intermittently. Uh, they actually have gotten better at it in the latest versions of iOS. Uh, but on the on the Android device, you probably spent some time organizing your desktop, you know, putting on widgets and saying where the apps are and what folders and so forth. You'd like to save that. And it depends on the launcher you're using. Some launchers, you can't save it. I can't remember if Samsung's TouchWiz launcher will let you save the desktop configuration. I'm betting it won't. But there are a lot of third-party launchers like Nova Launcher, um, Active Desktop, uh, that do let you do that. So I'm, I think uh, that would be the one kind of pain in the butt because you can easily download all the apps. In fact, you can even go to the Google Play Store and go through all the apps you purchased. In fact, it's a really good opportunity. I use this periodically to clear out apps that are on that list because it keeps track of everything you've downloaded from the store. Uh, to delete ones that I no longer, you know, make sense to download. And then I can quickly down re-download all the apps I have uh, ever downloaded. So that's also easy. I, I just would say save your desktop settings. And if the TouchWiz um, launcher that you're using on the S5 doesn't save that, and I'm almost certain it doesn't, although that might be one reason to turn on Samsung Backup and check, then you'll want to use a third-party launcher. Nova Launcher is very good. Uh, I think the Google Pixel, the new Google Pixel launcher, will save your settings. Check and see if you can back up your uh, desktop settings. That's a very nice thing to, to, to be able to do. On line four, we've got Mark Myrtle Beach. Hello, Mark. Hey, Leo. How you doing? I'm great. Good to talk to call. you. Thanks for calling. Hey, um, I spoke to you before about Alexa. Well, I'm sorry, the Echo device. <laughs> hey, that's good. Nice catch. <laughs> Yeah, almost. <laughs> we try. We try not to say the a word because I don't want anybody to have to, you know, buy a dollhouse on my account or something like yeah, that. Yeah, and it's just it's too easy to do, right? Yeah, it's so oh, well, it's so easy. I have to caution everybody who comes on our show. No, no, call it Echo. Call it Echo. <laughs> and then I hear from people who say, "But I changed my trigger word to Echo." Well, I can't help you then. Nothing I can and do. Anyway, what's going actually, on with your Echo? All right. So in the morning, I'll be in the bathroom shaving and. I like to use my Google phone for my Android for listening to the news. So I'll mm -hmm. say, uh, you know, play my briefing. Okay, Google, play my briefing. And I'll be listening to the briefing. And somewhere around, uh, you know, it's not every day, but there'll be a uh, advertisement in the middle. And it, I guess it's NPR I'm listening to. Yeah. It'll say, it'll talk about the, uh, and I'll just give one example because it wasn't just this one ad, but it'll be Ameritrade or one of them. Um, as they're advertising, and it will say that to load this app on your um, on your Echo, simply say the A word. Yeah. Please enable the Ameritrade um, right. skill. Yeah. Well, the thing is, the, the fact that it's using that, and I guess my question is, and it's not really a concern for me or anything, except for it's it's very interesting that they they could get away with. Kind of hi trying to hi hijack your. Device. Oh, so do you? Does, when you when it says that in your flash briefing, does the echo perk up and say, "Okay, I've enabled the Ameritrade skill." I haven't done it yet because I, I'm in a bathroom shaving in the morning when I. <laughs> so it doesn't hear it. I'll run, I'll, I'll run out of the bathroom to see if the light's even on. And it's like I oh, she didn't hear it. <laughs> in in you know in in when Amazon does its ads for uh, Echo, and you see them on yeah. TV all the time, they have they play an, a sound behind the keyword, the trigger word. That keeps the echo from waking up, oh, and and, okay. and Ameritrade. Anybody who's using those keywords should, for the very reason I would if I could. I just don't. Amazon doesn't tell anybody, so maybe that's the problem. Is Ameritrade doesn't know, but uh, you know that's possible to do in an ad to make. And that's why I say, Echo. I say tell your Echo to enable the tech guy skillers, I, which we don't have. But if we did, that's what I would do. Leo Laporte, the tech guy. I th I would bet you that if it's coming, so you're saying it's coming from your Google Home though. Well, well no, nah, I I'm just using my Android phone and, and for instance, like yeah. Uh, so it's coming from Google though. It's not coming from Amazon. It's not your flash briefing. Yeah. Oh, it is your flash briefing. Well, well, no, nah, it's coming for yeah. It's coming from the flash briefing, and it's the same one I have loaded on. Um, I, I also have yeah. The flash briefing. My... No ad in the flash briefing should trigger. I think uh, that's okay. even one of the rules. <laughs> Because that would be that would be sleazy, right? 
because then you would add that skill. <laughs> oh, yeah, oh, I mean, if they could get away with it, I, I'm sure they would do it. But the fact that the FCC has such, you know, they're, they're actually such the, F- the FCC does not in any way regulate this one. Amazon oh, does. Okay. Yeah, yeah. The FCC only regulates broadcast. Amazon. Oh, okay. Amazon does regulate it, though. And it is my, you know, we signed it because we're, we do a flash briefing. I'd yeah. have to look at the contract, but I, it's my memory that you're not allowed to use trigger words in your flash briefing. Amazon probably frowns on that, right? Yeah, I mean, <laughs> yeah, and I'm, I'm, I guess my thought is like, and I, I don't have an, an able to make purchases on my on my Echo, you know, so I purposely had that disabled so I can't even add anything to the cart. But I guess I'm seeing the potential if someone wants to get right. in there and and make a purchase, I mean, you'll end up <laughs> getting something delivered to your house that, you know. Um, but, yeah, I mean, if, if I, I don't recall hearing anything in the background that would, um, like, except for the, the voice on, uh, and it's usually the same the same voice on uh, NPR. Yeah. Um, yeah, because it that. Echo re- is reading. So it would be my guess that they would get booted very quickly from the flash briefing if they were to do oh, that. okay. Now, there's a very famous case. Burger King did do it in a television ad. And I remember that, yeah. Yeah, and they got in a lot of trouble. Google was furious. That's one FCC does regulate. Uh, Google, what they what Burger King did is they modified, right before the ad aired, they modified their Wikipedia entry because that's what Google's home device looks up queries like that. Oh, right. In. So they in the ad, they said, okay, Goog, what is the Whopper burger? And then if you if you happen to have a Google Assistant anywhere nearby, it would look that up in Wikipedia, and it delivered this special copy from Wikipedia. That So everybody was pissed. Google was pissed. Wikipedia was pissed. <laughs> I'm sure the FCC was pissed. Um, this is... Yeah, I remember that. Yeah, yeah. you remember that? And, it, and I think Burger King promised it'll never happen again. <laughs> and, of course, it was, clever that they did it, it was very yeah. clever, yeah, and Google fixed it. You know, in future versions, uh, they they but uh, yeah, nobody's done it since. It happened by accident. Aaron Paul, who was remember, who was the kid on uh, Breaking Bad, ha- used to do Xbox ads, and it, very famously, the Xbox ads would trigger anybody watching the TV on their Xbox it would trigger their Xbox and turn oh, and turned off the TV. So, <laughs> so uh, that was unintentional. So uh, there are cases of this, but I think it's pretty well frowned on, and I think the company that makes the assistant will definitely find a way to punish you. Somehow. Yeah, and, it, and it's happened. It's not the first time. Like I've noticed it here and there, and I can I can never like, if I, even if I wanted to record it, like I can't play it back because it'll never play that same commercial. Right, again. I know. But they're 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 so sparse in between where it's like, oh, there it goes again. You know, <laughs> it's like this will all. I it's this is actually becoming more and more of annoyances, which, which is. Uh, as I was referring to earlier, accidental triggering of these devices. I I yeah. really think this is going to go away soon. Companies are, this is going to become so much of a problem. Companies are going to finally let you set your own trigger word. They have to. Yeah, and I don't understand why it's so so difficult. I know there's not a lot to the, uh, to the, uh, that's the, the problem. Like yeah. It's, it's got to be pretty, really, really I mean, simple. Yeah. How much memory does it take to, uh, it, to put a, like even if you made it like a uh, four letter or something like that, it's, it's doable. Something. The Moto X had a, a configurable Google uh, Assistant uh, trigger word. You can use anything you wanted, and I really like that. Uh, but that's the last thing that did that. I, you know, I think that you're going to see that in the next couple of years. I really do. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see what uh, what transpires. Hey, nice to talk to you. Appreciate your calling. Hey, thanks, Leo. All right, Mark. Later. Take care. Well, hey, hey, how are you today? Leo Laporte here, the tech guy. Oh, it's time to talk. Computers, the internet, home theater, digital photography, smartphones, smart watches, all that jazz. Fourth of July weekend. It's a little slow. This is a good time to get in. we got a few lines open. That's a very rare occurrence. Phone number is 8888-ASK-LEO, 888-827-5536. Toll free from anywhere in the U.S. or Canada. 8888 Ask Leo. Line one, Alan, Spring, Texas. Hello, Alan. Hi, Leo. Welcome. What can I do for you? Uh, this is the second time I got into you, so I'm glad it was a slow weekend so I can get you're, you're a miracle man. <laughs> I tell you. Uh, 
kind of an IT guy down here, but my primary uh, duties, I work with PCs. I love them because they break down and keep me employed. <laughs> I use them that. There's definitely a higher percentage of PC calls on this show <laughs> for whatever reason, yeah. Yeah. I have a, I have a MacBook Pro uh, 2015, last grade of the wonders, and um, had it for a while. I was wanting to get your opinion on things like sea cleaner for basically just kind of doing some spring cleaning on it. I was looking today about something called Mac Keeper and then something flagged that said it was shareware virus type of thing. I am not a fan of Mac Keeper. I don't I wouldn't call it a virus, but it's definitely not uh, there are other it's really, really kind of interesting. Maybe this reflects on what you said about PCs needing more help. There aren't a lot of really good Mac maintenance tools, and truthfully, I don't think you need them. Uh, but on the other hand, I'm the wrong guy to ask because I don't like CCleaner either. I don't think you need to clean your registry on a PC either. So right, right. Uh, modern modern operating systems shouldn't need a lot of help. The one time you might want a, a, a utility is if the drive dies, if you lose files. And then you might want a right. low-level utility that can examine the hard drive and recover erased files. But things that are like maintenance, like disk optimizers, don't need them anymore. Uh, yeah. C cleaner, registry cleaners don't need it anymore. Uh, there are a lot of Mac tools that are, you know, supposedly clean the caches, don't need them anymore. Even Apple's own disk first aid, which is practically all the utility you need. It, it's in the utility folder in the applications folder. Uh, disk, disk utility has a cleaning uh, routine or a disk, they call it disk fix routine, or re now I think they call it repair. And even that's done less and less over the years in the old days mostly what it did is went through and fixed permissions because apple's a kind of like a unix operating system and it has disk uh, file access permissions that can be uh, changed by accident by programs and sometimes that can cause problems for instance if a preference file gets locked then a program won't be able to save its preferences and will misbehave so the disk utility did little kind of minor maintenance like that i don't even think you need that anymore so honestly, I would stay unless you unless you have a problem, I would stay away from it. There are some Mac tools that uh, have been around since forever um, that I would I would perhaps recommend, uh, depending on uh, what you need to do. Um, some of them are free. There's disk cache, you know, cache utilities and things like that. I honestly. I hesitate even recommending these. They tend to be expensive. AlSoft makes a disk recovery tool that's okay. I, don't, I just don't think you need it, to be honest. So yeah. the, you're new to Macs. Is that is that the uh, is that the issue? Well, I got about maybe two or three years in Macs and over 20 years in PCs. Right. So I'm kind of a newbie in my own mind, but I'm also thinking with Mojave coming out, it's kind of a moot point because if I go with a free uh, clean installation, then that's just... You know, You're fresh. There's... Yeah, and both Windows and Mac OS have done a really good job of creating uh, operating system restore routines and repair routines that eliminate the need for a lot of third-party uh, disk utilities. So, okay. I mean, there's Disk Warrior, which has been around for an awfully long time. That's the Alsoft program. Um, it's at uh, Alsoft, A L S O F T dot com. But it's you know, I don't know if it's worth spending a hundred bucks on something. <laughs> You probably really don't need uh yeah. there's there's quite a question about uh, these days in the mac world but i think it also also should be in the pc world do you need something like this and it's in my opinion probably not and when you do you should you know you'll you'll get the, the proprietary tool you'll need i guess apple's disk yeah. utility is sufficient yeah because i i don't even really run any kind of virus software on it i don't either you you don't need it either. No, I'm one of those guys who says the less you install, the better. Every program you install on your computer opens potentially opens back doors to bad guys, adds flaws, security issues, and it's particularly true of utilities, low level things like antivirus software and disk utilities, because typically they'll hook into, in the Mac case, the kernel. Actually, it's true in Windows, too. They'll hook into the lower-level parts of the operating system, which means they can be really a bad avenue for bad guys. The other one that's uh, widely used is called Tech Tool Pro. Again, uh, I'll give them to you for your reference. We'll put links in the show notes, but I don't think you need it. <laughs> 
it, you know, if you if you have a disc issue at some point, then go get Disc Warrior and you'll be fine. Okay. What about, um, I guess, other than coming to, you know, Twit, which I look at all your programs. Thank uh, you. Week, Thank you. iOS Today. Yeah. Um, other than that, um, I, I keep up with uh, Patrick Norton over there on his uh, yep. tech thing. Tech thing um, is his uh, is his podcast T E K T H I N G and he's very good at that. Yeah, we may differ. Yeah. You know, sometimes we'll differ on recommendations. I mean, that's the thing. No geek agree. You know, not all geeks agree on any of this stuff. And I I fall on the side of install less. Yeah. And do less, uh, especially nowadays. Modern operating systems have really been refined. You know, Apple now is using a new file system, the APFS, which really is great and has, has long been needed and eventually Apple's going to turn on some of the features of APSFS that'll make it even less necessary for disk utilities. There's a snapshot feature that allows you to do a backup much better than Time Machine, a backup of an existing setup and, and quickly go back to it. It's a more modern style uh, file system, a copy on write file system uh, that frankly is superior to NTFS. I'm sure Microsoft at some point will do this as well. So uh, these these things, um, and th by the way, the fact that APFS, if you install Mojave and uh, you have an internal drive, it'll almost certainly be reformatted as APFS, means that some of these t tools like Disk Warrior may not even work anymore. It's a whole new world for them. So, oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, I, I would say just uh, <laughs> stick with the stuff the company gives you, <clears throat> and, and you're probably going to be fine. More important, as you know, more importantly, uh, don't install stuff from strangers. Don't install programs you didn't ask for. Don't click links in email. Don't click links in messaging or on Facebook. And if any time a program says, oh, you need to download this, be suspicious. Even if it's Adobe Flash, oh, you need an update. Be suspicious. Make sure you're getting it from Adobe. And uh, most of the time, that's where people get in trouble, not not because their registry got too big. So that's the best thing to do. And, and the less you install, the better. That's a kind of a my new philosophy. I've been refining this over the last four decades of doing this. <laughs> but my, 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 I think this is the right philosophy. The more you install, the, the more risk you add to un, you know, unreliability and, and even security flaws. Install less. Only install just the stuff you need. And if there's any question, don't install it. Don't install it. Leo Laporte, the tech guy. Chris Marquardt, our photo guy, coming up in about 15 minutes with some photography tips. Lots more of your calls, too. 8888-ASK-LEO. Hey, Chris. Hi there. How are you? I am great. You sound good. You're coming in loud and clear. Yeah. Unfortunately, Skype has just removed the ability to fix the mic volume, so it's going to auto oh, just Prominently. They just took that away. I, I even can't select different devices for uh, for the earphones and for the microphone anymore. That's probably so, they probably defer to the operating system. They're dumbing it down. No, they're they're just dumbing it down. I you know we've tried er, you know every alternative I can find and and really nothing is as good as Skype unfortunately. So well and and as reliable I know. Yeah, we'll have to uh, just, just live with it unless crazy. we can find something better. Okay, I'll well, talk to you in a I, I few. Hope, I hope the audio is going to be good. I just don't have as much control over it anymore. It sounds okay right now. Okay. But that's good to know because it won't just be you. It'll be everybody we talk to. It's in the latest uh, uh, Skype version for Mac 8.24. Yeah, we still tell people to update because, you know. It's oh, but they, and it does it automatically anyway. So. Yeah, you don't have any choice. Well, there you go. All <sighs> right, be right back. Talk to All you right. in Thank you, Chris. Leo Laporte, the tech guy. 8888 ask leo the phone number episode 1502 wow and we are in july already uh the website techguylabs.com great to know if you are listening to the show and you say i need a, i need a link i need a, what did he say what was that or you want to correct me or add something you can do that all at techguylabs.com there's no fee no sign up it's just wide open like the web remember the web used to be like that you didn't have to have an account to get in. I think kids today think the web is Facebook or Snapchat or, I don't know, Instagram. Kids don't really use Facebook, do they? Not in the U.S. anyway. Sam in Los Angeles. Leo Laporte, the tech guy. Hi, Sam. Good afternoon, Leo. How are you doing? I'm well. How are you? 
I'm doing fine. Long time listener, first time caller to get in. Wonderful. I'm glad you got in. All right. Well, I'm calling you today as I have an HP uh, uh, notebook, uh, and I went on vacation out the country for about six months, and I come back and I only set this computer up to a four-digit pin. I didn't set up with a password or any email for Windows. So when I got back, it tell, I tried to pin too many times, and it told me it is to redirect me to a password, which I don't have, and then it asked me for a, uh, a removable media disk in order to try to reset the password, and I'm yeah. not able to do that either. So... Uh, options left here. <laughs> to get uh, the first thing. of all, a six-week vacation? Well, yes. <laughs> Six months, I'm sorry. Six months vacation? I'm so jealous. All right. Uh, so so no one used your computer in that six months, right? No, definitely not. So it was just closed and sitting there. Yeah. I hate to tell you this, but you can't set up, is it Windows 10? Windows 10, yes. You can't set up Windows 10 with a pin unless you give it a password. So you uh -huh. did use a password. You just don't remember it. But I tell you, I think I know what your password is. Really? Well, I not I don't know what the password is, but it's your Microsoft account. So when My you, Microsoft when, account. Yeah. So when you first set uh, up when you first set up Windows 10, you mm -hmm. can't. It is possible to set up Windows 10 with a local password. The old days. Remember the old days? You'd have a password that was local. It wasn't very effective. Okay. But nowadays, when you first set up Windows 10, it says, "Okay, log into your Microsoft account or create one if you don't have one." And in order to, to uh, bypass that, you have to go through, I'm sorry, you have to click a number of buttons and so forth and say, no, 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 I don't want to do that. Normally, you just do it. Now, I don't know if you remember having a Microsoft account. Well, I do have a Microsoft account, yeah. which is actually under uh, MSN. Right. So, so my suggestion is try that. Okay. And uh, that's the password it's asking for. Once you log in with your and and that what happens is after six months it goes well he hasn't used his pin we better go back we revert but once you log in with your Microsoft password from then on the pin will work again. Oh, I see. Oh, okay. All right. If not that, I would have to take it to a repair shop so they can reinstall. Do I? No, you can bypass the you can bypass the Windows password. But here's the deal: almost certainly you associate it with your Microsoft account. If you forget your password or your Microsoft account, they have you know, forgot my password. They have a, a way to recover it. So that's what you would go through and do. Now, if uh -huh. you, you don't remember doing this at all? Or does, I don't. Does I it dimly ring a bell? You did it a long time ago. Right, exactly. Yeah. So I'm going to try. I bet you, I bet you, because I don't, as far as I know, there's no way to have a pin to log in unless uh -huh. you first log in with your Microsoft account. Right, exactly. Okay, and I was thinking also if I could buy a, a, a secondary disc to, because I'm I'm not sure what it's asking me for. You yeah, media you can. Removal. Yeah, they can recover. You can recover it. There's other ways to do it. There's the official way, but there's also loft crack and other tools that'll let you get into that password. I'm trying to avoid spending 150. No, 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 no. You can do it all yourself. Absolutely, you can do it all yourself. <laughs> okay. Well, thanks for the moment. Yeah, you're welcome. I bet you that account will work. The reason they do that. It's actually a smart thing. Well, it's good for Microsoft because then what Microsoft wants is that all of your activities with Microsoft stuff is associated back to one identity. Every company wants that now. You know, your Google account, your Twitter account, your Facebook account. They want as much as possible to associate your activity with that account because they use it, right, to sell advertising. Uh, sometimes they sell it to third parties. It's the more they know about you, every company, every company, even Apple. Apple says no, but no. Uh, even Apple. The more they know about you, the better from their point of view.